Welcome to Flash Fiction from Giant's Reach by Steve Cook. Hi and welcome back to another podcast. I'm going to be a player in a Dungeons and Dragons game starting on Monday. It'll be streamed on Twitch, uh, and it's being run by a good friend of mine, Oz Mills. So if you're interested in watching that, it's uh, twitch.tv forward slash Oz Mills. Um, it's called Eldritch Leap, and it's based on the old TV series Quantum Leap, but with a, a decidedly Dungeons and Dragons twist. I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, yeah, tune in. Um, it's myself and my wife and several other people involved in it. I uh, hope to see you there. Museum piece. Verity sat back, clicking her long front claws together. Soil rained down from them, some of it speckling her belly fur. It's something all right, she said. Something big. Hart looked over from his own pit only his head visible above the grass. Same here. Might even be the same animal. The moles clambered out of their excavations, blinking in the weak light of the early morning. Dew danced across the grass, a thick fog obscuring what little sunlight filtered down. It's an uplift for sure, Verity said. Fossilised, yes, but an uplift. There's no way something got this large by accident. It's an animal until we can determine the truth of it, Verity. Hart sighed. I know how badly you want to find evidence of ancient uplifts, but you're also highly educated. You know you can't just assume. Verity let out a small growl of frustration, then shook her head. Well, let's look at the evidence. What we've uncovered so far is the foundation of what is unmistakably a building. Or, Hart said, it's a a fault in the ground, a random movement of earth and stone. It has corners, Hart. Sharp, 90-degree corners. It's a building. They were stood in the middle of a series of pits and holes, each of them dug with sharp edges. The fog began to clear as they talked, revealing more of the low valley in which they stood. Within the building, placed almost perfectly in the centre, is this skeleton, bits and pieces of a creature so massive that it dwarfs us, you and me. Look at this bone. She pointed down into one of the pits. Revealed at the bottom was a fossilised leg bone, creamy coloured and decidedly more solid than the soil around it. Already fossilised, right? But the soil around it isn't. Not even close and won't be for centuries. It's not deep enough, not old enough. Yes, the easiest solution is that it's all natural, but it just doesn't fit the evidence. The hills to either side, slowly coming into view as the sun burned the fog off, were sparse. A few patches of gorse and heather and a couple of lonely cows watching the moles with wary eyes were all that made it interesting. That and the excavation. Hart began to pace back and forth between the holes. Let's say you're right. That means, what, that some civilization came before us, dug this fossil out of the ground and put it in a building? Like a museum? He ignored her imploring eyes. Which is what we want to do, I suppose. Exactly. Verity grinned. It's not like we're the first people to suggest this, either. There were those squirrels who said they'd found a vault or something, but no one was ever able to verify it, and there's always people talking about giant structures in the desert. But this, this is right here, on Johalland soil. Evidence of a structured precursor civilization with museums. And the fossil itself must be ancient. It could be a statue, Hart said, lamely. Even if it is, it's intricate artwork. And as deep as we found it, no way is it contemporary. No, this is something exceptional. Verity walked over to their camp and wriggled out of her tool belt, letting it slide to the ground. I don't know what to say, Hart, what to think right now. This is so exciting. The find of a lifetime and it's ours. Uh, Verity. Of course we'll have to set up a perimeter, Verity said, slinging a blanket over her back. Guards, this sort of thing needs guarding, but... Verity! She spun around. What? She snapped. Hart pointed to the top of the western hill, and Verity followed his gaze. Atop the hill, hidden by the fog until minutes earlier, stood five lizard folk. They were silhouetted against the blue sky, but even from that glimpse it was clear they were armoured. All five carried spears. Who are they? Hart shook his head. 
This is a giant lizard skeleton, right? So maybe this is theirs. A burial ground, a temple? The lizards moved as one, running down the hillside, spears outstretched and the mole reared up. Something we shouldn't have messed with. The lizards moved incredibly fast, thundering over the grass. Verity backed up until she stood on the other side of one of the excavations, claws digging into the earth. She bared her teeth as the first lizard came close. Their armour was made of some sort of wood, with bones strung over it, their spears tipped with what looked like giant teeth, and their eyes were highlighted with stripes of red dye that stood out starkly against turquoise scales. The lizard's charge came to a stop on the other side of the excavation, their spears extended over the gap. They jabbed, the spear tips not quite reaching the moles. Think they want us to leave, Hart murmured. The lizards edged closer, forcing the moles further away from the dig site. One of them, a bright orange crest on its head, began to make a shooing gesture. Okay, okay, we're going, Hart said, grabbing at Verity. She allowed herself to be led away, staring at the lizard folk. We're coming back, she muttered. This isn't over. It is for now, Hart said. We know where the dig is, we know what's down there, but it's not worth risking ourselves. Verity scowled turning away at last. The yapping of the lizard folk followed them all the way out of the valley. You've been listening to Flash Fiction written for my Patreon, Giant's Reach. If you'd like to become a supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Giant's Reach, where you can find more fiction just like this, 